Ukraine didn't get what it wanted from NATO. Bank of America might owe you some money. And a jury ruled on a will found in Aretha Franklin's couch. That's some of what we'll get to on The 7 from The Washington Post. I'm Jeff Pierre. It's Wednesday, July 12th. Let's get you caught up with today's seven stories. First up, Ukraine responded angrily to a plan for it to join the NATO military alliance. Under the plan, Ukraine will join NATO only when members agree and unspecified conditions are met. This was announced yesterday at a summit of NATO leaders in Lithuania. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said the lack of a clear timeline for his country to join was absurd. His statement shocked officials at the summit, which continues today. Ukraine wants a clear pathway to be established that would give it confidence that the country will soon be invited. But NATO members are worried about being dragged into a direct war with Russia. Zelensky will meet with President Biden at the summit today. Number two, more than 100 people have been rescued from floods in Vermont. This week's flooding has trapped residents in their homes and washed out major roads. Yesterday, authorities said it could take days to reach everyone. To make things worse, more rain is in the forecast for tomorrow. The extreme rain in the Northeast has been caused by a powder keg of atmospheric conditions over and around the area. Climate change also appears to be making these heavy rain events more likely. Number three, Iowa's legislature voted to ban most abortions after about six weeks. Republican Governor Kim Reynolds called a special session of the GOP-controlled Iowa state legislature to enact new abortion restrictions. The vote passed along mostly partisan lines last night. At the moment, abortion is legal in Iowa up to 22 weeks, but the new restrictions are expected to go into effect on Friday after the governor signs them into law. Iowa's ban adds to a wave of new abortion restrictions in conservative-led states that began when the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade last year. Number four, prices seem to be returning closer to normal levels. The latest government data on inflation will be released this morning. It's expected to show a notable drop a year after inflation soared to the highest level in decades. This is the latest evidence that efforts to control price spikes appear to be working without doing a lot of damage to the economy. Last month, the Federal Reserve held interest rates steady for the first time in over a year to give it time to weigh what to do next. Number five, a former member of Charles Manson's cult was released from prison. We're talking about Leslie Van Houten. She was convicted in the fatal stabbing of grocery store chain owner Lino LaBianca and his wife Rosemary in Los Angeles in 1969. Van Houten was 19 when Manson, a cult leader, asked her to get into a car with several other Manson family members. Together, they drove around in Los Angeles and searched their victims. Yesterday, Van Houten, who is now 73, was released from a California correctional facility. The decision came after a parole board found she had shown what it called extraordinary rehabilitative efforts. Number six, Bank of America has to pay $250 million in fines and reimbursements. Regulators found the bank charged multiple $35 overdraft fees for single transactions. It also withheld reward bonuses on new credit cards and open accounts without customer permission. The bank said it'll repay people it overcharged on fees by depositing funds into their account or sending checks. So if this applies to you, keep an eye out for the money. And at number seven. A will found in Aretha Franklin's couch was declared valid. The handwritten note was found months after the Queen of Souls' death in 2018. But this was one of two wills found by her family, which sparked a legal dispute among her four children. Yesterday's jury decision was a win for Franklin's second oldest and youngest sons. 
They say the note from the sofa should override the other will because it was written more recently. One of the sons, Kel Franklin, expressed his relief about the jury's decision yesterday. Uh, well, we just want to exhale <laughs> right now. It's been a long five years for my family, my children, and uh, we just want to exhale, truthfully. That's the show for today. But before you go, today is the last chance to take advantage of our big July 4th sale. It's a great deal. You can get unlimited access to The Washington Post for only 50 cents a week. I hope you take advantage of this limited time offer. Go to WashingtonPost.com slash subscribe to sign up. I'm Jeff Pierre, and I will meet you back here tomorrow.